A Coloradan is fighting back against the election rigging conspiracy theories that sent him into hiding, dropping a lawsuit on the Trump campaign and prominent right-wing figures in Colorado and nationwide. This state's COVID numbers keep tracking in a good direction, while the numbers have not added up at Denver's Air Traffic Control Center to the point that it's impacting flights. A young Coloradan spending extra time at home doing what he loved happened to turn it into a best-selling book. And we have decked the halls around here. We'll deck yours too, next. President Trump's election fraud fantasy is having real life or death consequences for a Coloradan caught in that web of conspiracy theories. He is in hiding from the people who believe that the presidential election was rigged by communists, Antifa, the Clintons, George Soros, voting software companies, and a dead Venezuelan dictator. That Coloradan, Dominion Voting Systems' Eric Coomer, is fighting back tonight. He's unleashing what you might call a kraken of a lawsuit, defamation against the Trump campaign and a crowd of conservative media and political figures inside and outside of Colorado, the folks who have whipped people into a frenzy with these unsubstantiated election fraud claims. Coomer recently spoke about how his life has been turned upside down. Here's Marshall Zellinger. This is not just an attack on me. It really is probably the most severe attack on, on our democracy. Eric Coomer is the director of product security and strategy for Dominion Voting Systems, which is based in Denver. Dominion offers election equipment, including touchscreen voting machines and ballot counters. And Dominion has recently been attacked from local conservatives, Michelle Malkin and Joe Oltman, to as high up as the president, who claimed on Twitter the company switched hundreds of thousands of votes. It's been extremely difficult on my entire family. Um, you know, my, my father even received uh, a, a harassing letter in the mail um, directly to him. And it was about me and about how I was a traitor and, and how I was, you know, either going to be hung or spend the rest of my life in, in prison. Coomer did this interview with the Ark Valley Voice, an online news outlet for the Arkansas Valley based in Salida. And because of people who don't believe the election results, he did not do this interview from his own home. They've put out my personal address. They have my personal phone. They know what, what kind of vehicle I drive. I am very hesitant to go out in public. Um, I mean, that's, I, I hate to say it, that's one upside of the current pandemic is that, you know, everybody wears a mask. Um, it's harder to tell who I am. Some of the claims of voter fraud don't even have anything to do with Dominion. This map is from Verified Voting, a nonprofit that keeps track of every voting machine used by each county. For example, 62 of 64 Colorado counties use Dominion voting machines. All of Georgia does as well. There are some key areas that do not like battleground cities and counties where the president's team challenged the results and failed. If you look at Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, the areas that they, they focused on for quote unquote fraud are, aren't even our uh, customers, right? Um, we don't have Allegheny, we don't have Philadelphia, we don't have Milwaukee. And this afternoon, Coomer sued the Trump campaign and a number of individuals over the attacks he's received since election day. While I do worry about my, my personal safety, um, I, I, worry, I worry about our electoral process. We're able to show you this interview because of something called CoLab. It's a network of 20 Colorado newsrooms that share content. Uh, Kyle, what's interesting about a lawsuit like this is that up until now, uh, people like Coomer have had to prove that they've been telling the truth the entire time. And in a, in a lawsuit like this, if it goes through the court system, the people making uh, the accusations now need to go to court and prove that they weren't lying and defaming his character. And, and it, it doesn't seem like uh, right-wing news outlets like Newsmax are willing to stand behind their own reporting. I think a lot of people online have seen the Newsmax correction that they recently aired where they said, well, we've got no proof of that or that or that or that. And it was like a list of every bat excrement crazy conspiracy, conspiracy theory they laid out. They're like, ah, we actually don't have any evidence of that. It was interesting because there was some reporting yesterday. I think Colorado Politics was reporting the possibility of a lawsuit coming. And it seems now, looking back, maybe that's why those corrections or clarifications were happening in preparation for, hey, wait, 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 we never really said that. We were just saying this. Now, we'll see if it's enough to uh, keep people out of real trouble. Marshall, thank you. So a lot of nationally known names are being uh, sued by this Coloradan for defamation. One Colorado-based name that you might not have heard before is Joe Oltman. 
He's a political newcomer who's aligned with the far right in Colorado. He's been pushing aggressive tactics and conspiracy theories. Uh, Altman has used the talk radio station 710 KNUS to repeatedly push his claim that Dominion's Eric Coomer is secretly part of Antifa, said he overheard it on a phone call. And Altman found elected Republicans in Colorado willing to embrace his tactics. Back in October, with elected state legislators standing at his side, Altman vowed to publish the personal information of journalists who wrote articles he did not like, saying, quote, we're coming after you. Just days ago, outgoing House GOP leader Patrick Neville published the home address of a Denver Post reporter who wrote about how Neville had funneled campaign money to his family's business. Let's take a look at the snapshot of the pandemic in our state right now. There are some positive trends. There are 1,243 hospitalizations currently. It's down 10 patients from yesterday, down more than 200 from this time last week. Our positivity rate is still dropping, currently 5.8%. It's within striking distance of that 5% that health experts want to see. Now, that's just a one-day number. Look at our weekly average for positivity. It's at 7.3%, though it's falling. Colorado added 1,913 new cases of COVID-19 yesterday, so we're averaging a bit over 2,500 new cases per day. That daily case count has been steadily trending down since the end of November. Deaths, as we have often discussed here, are a lagging indicator after cases, after hospitalizations, and then death reporting gets delayed due to how those numbers come into the state. So we look back a ways for more accuracy on deaths. Beginning of November, we averaged 64 deaths per day from COVID-19. So if you're listening to the advice of public health experts, the airport is not likely in your plans for the holiday week. But if you're going to pull a Mayor Hancock and you just need to get away, be prepared for the potential of delays due to COVID. Today, DIA again reported a staffing issue at its air traffic control center. Our Steve Steger spent the day trying to figure out what's happening in that tower. If you have a flight out of DIA this week, you might have gotten an email like this. United Airlines told this next viewer, quote, due to COVID-19 related staffing challenges at the FAA air traffic control tower at Denver International Airport, your flight may be impacted by a delay. Just this morning, the airport tweeted about delays of up to 20 minutes. By afternoon, the FAA's website said the delays for arriving flights averaged 26 minutes due to other slash staffing. The FAA told me this morning that 275 of their facilities are currently impacted by COVID. But this map on their website showed Denver was the only one experiencing delays today because of staffing issues. An FAA spokesman wouldn't tell me how many people were out of the office today. Again, pointing to this website. All it says is the last positive test of personnel at Denver's air traffic control was a week ago Monday. The FAA does say it has contingency plans in place should a facility have a positive test and need to be cleaned. Another air traffic control center would take over operations while that happens. That wasn't necessary today, they say. So we were wondering if the pandemic is hampering the training of new air traffic controllers. They're required to train on the job. The FAA says that they are still doing that on the job training as they have staffing to allow for it and that they have new classes of air traffic controllers, Kyle, in their facility in Oklahoma City. So, Steve, this is, I mean, in some ways, it's no different than any other workplace. You're going to have people who end up sick with COVID. They have to miss some work. Other people sub in. But, I mean, this is an air traffic control center. This is not like next where, like, I could be gone for a week. They just put you in and nobody notices the difference. Exactly. And you also have to think about the logistics of an air traffic control center. You can space out, but in many instances, you're not going to be able to provide that spacing for people all the time so people are going to be interfacing and these people are, are the, these air traffic controllers are working long hours on this job so it's a natural environment where something like this could happen one interesting thing we were trying to figure out today kyle uh, is to look and see if there was any outbreak reported at either of these facilities and we asked the state if they keep track of that at federal facilities they told us today they don't as far as they know and that that would be up to the FAA. And as we pointed out, their data is only when someone tests positive. Interesting. Very interesting. Well, good to know they've got an out-of-town backup if they need it. Steve, thank you.
Some of Denver's best-known buildings still covered in plywood. We haven't seen protests in months. You asked us to find out why. And a 14-year-old's accidental fame. It's just not his character to want to be in the spotlight or famous. Jake was just passing the time. But his talent now has nationwide attention. Next. Tonight's next question comes to us from Anna. She drove through Cap Hill yesterday, noticed the city and county building's windows are still boarded up to protect from riots. Anna wondered when the boards and the fences are coming down and was curious whether the city's worried about future issues. So that building was originally boarded up after the demonstrations of this past summertime, same with some of the surrounding buildings that are owned by the city. So Anna, city told us today that a lot of the fencing is already down and they had to do a bit of extra work on the city and county building's old windows before they removed the plywood. Plywood's down from the web building and from the election divisions right across the street as well. We took a spin around there today and did see that the boards are still up on the Lindsay Flanagan Courthouse, the Denver County Jail, and the McNichols building. The city did not give us a timetable for when those will be coming down. So I've been struggling with what to get all of you for the holidays. I mean, what do you get? A few hundred thousand of your closest friends who spent the pandemic at your side day after day sharing stories and struggles and, and laughter together. So my budget for several hundred thousand holiday gifts uh, is a bit limited. So here's what I came up with. A next holiday ornament. One for each of you. Uh, you can make two if you want. It's, it's not very difficult. Okay, yes, I'm sorry. So there is a do-it-yourself aspect to this uh, for economics, but it's easy. I made the first one there. You just go to the next section on 9news.com or wherever you find us on social media, and the printout for the ornament is right there. Super simple. You, you, you take it, you, just, you, you fold it, you cut around the wood pile, you punch a hole through the coronavirus stuck at the top, and then you add some ribbon or string or whatever. Listen, maybe your family and friends are going to get what the, the wood thing is. Maybe they won't. Who cares? It's going to be our little reminder of this strange, strange year that we've been through together. So, happy holidays from all of us at Next to you. A strong winter storm is pushing into Colorado tonight. Heavy snow up in the mountains and strong winds here in the metro area overnight into tomorrow. On HJ Doppler 9, I'm tracking that heavy snow going in the northern and central part of the state. In fact, that's where we have the advisories until noon tomorrow for about four to eight inches stacking up. The storm system is a fast mover. It rolls out, but it will leave some very gusty winds in its wake, especially across the eastern side of the state up toward Wyoming and through Nebraska with wind gusts up to 65 miles per hour. And let's talk about these temps. We were in the 60s today, 30s if we're lucky tomorrow. It does look like a mild and dry Christmas holiday with another round of snow, possibly next Tuesday. So I'm trying to get everybody in the next family, uh, you, me, everybody who works on the show together for a big family photo because we're going to use it. We're putting together a new look for the show in the in next year. So if you want to send me a picture, your favorite photo of you and, and whoever you watch the show with, we are going to add it to the introduction and some other pieces of the show so that you guys get to be the face of this thing from here on out. Here's how you do it. If you uh, go to uh, 9 slash next, Upload your photo. That's where you can download the ornament, too. It's all one place. Add your photo to our giant family photo. In a few weeks, you're going to start seeing yourself and other Next viewers get the on-screen credit that you deserve for making this a great place to hang out every night. We have all needed a laugh, or, or two, or 2,000 lately. I guess drawing is just a good way to just express what's going on in my mind through paper. A teenager just trying to spend the time with one of his hobbies ended up giving a laugh to tens of thousands of people across America. And it turned into a best-selling book. Next. The pandemic's created opportunities for people to focus a bit more on their passions. For a 14-year-old Colorado named Jake Hamilton, that meant more time to do what he loves, drawing. It's also how he ended up with a best-selling book. Uh, this is my sketchbook. He's been drawing since we can remember. On paper, on the walls, uh, everywhere, but art has always been something he's drawn to. I don't know, I guess drawing is just a good way to just 
express what's going on in my mind in, through paper. You have a lot of bathroom <laughs> comics. I would come out in the morning and he had a whiteboard hanging on his door. He started doodling and the doodles were actually really funny. I'd say I'm a pretty funny guy. Lots of people seem to think so. He agreed that I could put him up on an Instagram account. Now this was the very first one, right? That may have been something. the first one. I said, hey Jake, I need to tell you something. Uh, there are thousands and thousands of people all over the world that like your comics and thought you were they were great. How do you feel about that? Like the first thought that in my head is, oh no, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> it's just not his character to want to be in the spotlight or famous. This one's my personal favorite. People said, if these were in a book, I would buy it. And we thought, I don't know. Do we want to make a book out of this? And uh, here we are. Well, a lot of people have described it as dry humor. <sighs> and uh, I don't really know what dry humor is, if I'm going to be honest. <laughs> but it, it, sound, it sounds like something I would do. I asked him which one is the weirdest comic. It's like asking which one of these hundred strawberries is the sweetest. <laughs> it's a tough year for everybody. I like that. Oh, yeah. Hey, man, what if we did something that helped make people smile? Something that uh, brought a little light into people's lives. Jake shared his story with our photojournalist, Foster Gaines. If you're interested in seeing some of Jake's work, it's at jakesdoor.com. We'll link to it in this article on 9news.com as well. A very Colorado way to de decorate for the holidays on the western slopes. That and your feedback. Next. Most Colorado thing we saw today is Christmas time in the orchard. Love what Erica Roseberry did at their place outside Hotchkiss on the western slope. The orchard ladder is typically used for picking fruit in the summer and fall and pruning trees in the winter. That's just a really distinctive way to uh, make a little Christmas tree for the season. Hey, if you see Christmas done with a Colorado twist, we want to see it too. Email next at 9news.com or get our attention on Twitter with the hashtag HeyNext. Uh, this, though, just kind of seems like Christmas 2020 everywhere. Santa's face plant uh, was not on purpose. Morgan says the wind up in Wheat Ridge brought the big man down. But he is now all of us at the end of this year. Got a note during the last commercial break from a man named Robert Waite. Emailed in, so I, I just want to wanna read you his email off the phone. Uh, he is writing in to talk to you about what you did for families in Denver Public Housing. A few weeks ago, you raised $142,000 to buy holiday gift cards for every kid in Denver Housing uh, and then groceries for the families with the leftovers. Robert writes, thanks for the gift cards. My son and I were homeless. My sons and I were homeless for the most part of 2020. We were able to be housed through DHA and in the mail we received two gift cards, one for each child. I'm a single father waiting for my disability to go through. Wasn't going to be able to afford gifts this year. That helps so much. He writes to you, bless you and yours this holiday season. Merry Christmas from Robert Wade. Merry Christmas indeed. Uh, remember, your woodpile ornament awaits you at 9news.com slash next. Very easy construction. It's a talker for the families. See you next time.